Now that we've discussed the logic behind difference waves, let's look at an example. Here's an N170 study by Kufner et al., where they wanted to use the N170 component to study the development of face processing from childhood through early adulthood. This required making face minus non-face difference waves. But the overall N170 for faces reflects the sum of many different ERP components, some of which are face-specific and some of which are present for both faces and other kinds of objects. Previous studies of the development of face processing had just looked at the ERPs elicited by faces. These studies found that the scalp distribution of the N170 changed markedly over the course of development, and they concluded that children and adults use different brain systems for face processing. But the change in scalp distribution might have been the result of changes in other components that are also present during the time period of the N170 component, with no change in the actual face processing. To distinguish between a developmental change in face-specific processing and a developmental change in other non-specific processes, Kufner et al. ran the experiment shown here. They showed subjects a randomized sequence of faces, cars, phase-scrambled faces, and phase-scrambled cars. To keep the subjects alert and attentive, they had the subjects press one button for the faces and the cars, and another button for the scrambled faces and the scrambled cars. It wasn't an oddball paradigm. All four of these stimulus categories occurred equally often. Here are the ERP waveforms they recorded to faces over right occipitotemporal cortex. As you can see, there were huge differences across ages in the P1 wave, with a much larger P1 in younger children and the smallest P1 in the adults. Children typically have larger ERPs than adults. This is a result of several factors, including a greater number of synapses and thinner skulls in children. Kufner et al. also found a complex set of changes in the N170 latency range, and the latencies tended to be earlier in older subjects, likely reflecting increased myelination. But are these huge differences in ERPs a result of changes in face processing, or do they reflect more general changes? If we look at the ERPs elicited by the cars, we see the same general pattern of age-related changes. So it seems that most of the developmental changes are not specific to faces. Here are the scalp distributions for the face stimuli at the time of the N170, viewed from the back of the head. Just as in previous studies, there were huge differences across ages. But do these differences reflect changes in face processing or changes in nonspecific visual processes? To answer that question, Kufner et al. looked at the scalp distribution of the face minus scrambled face difference wave. The idea is that the ERP to the faces contains all the same activity as the ERP to the scrambled faces plus face-specific activity. So a face minus scrambled face difference wave will isolate the face-specific activity. In adults, you can see that the scalp distribution of the difference wave is quite different from the scalp distribution of the whole face ERP. The difference wave is much more focused over the lateral occipitotemporal areas where we'd expect to see face-specific processing. Here are the scalp distributions of the difference waves for all the age groups. They're nearly identical. So once you isolate face-specific processing with a difference wave, you can see that the same brain regions are active for faces from four-year-olds through adults. So difference waves are a common way of isolating specific ERP components. They're not perfect, and you need to think about whether a given study has really isolated the component of interest. But they're very simple, easy to understand, and super helpful overall.